Hello everyone. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining me here today live. I'm a little bit later than I normally am. So I had um, a few calls and appointments. I am actually heading off to the US tomorrow. So as you do before you fly out for a week. I am super busy trying to jam everything in and get done so I can just relax while I'm in the US. So I won't be going live next week just because I will be just taking a little bit of time off. I'm going to um, a bit of like a, a women's business type conference this weekend um, to kind of hang out, do some mindset work, do some thinking. And then the a couple of days next week, I'm just going to relax and let it all soak in. So I'm super excited about that. But today I wanted to talk to you about getting deals in the summer. So I see a lot of people being worried about oh, taking holidays and, you know, people, you know, landlords and property sellers being on holiday in the summer and everything just seems to kind of slow down and come to a halt in the summer. So I wanted to just give you a little bit of motivation and a couple of ideas on how to make sure that you keep moving forward while it's summer and while everybody's having a holiday. I want you to be able to have a holiday as well, have some time off, relax a little bit more, but not give up your momentum that you've built up or that you've been starting to build up because that is probably the biggest thing that happens if we take some time off or if we just let the the kind of summer fun and we've had such amazing weather this summer as well if we just let all of that get to us then we lose all of that momentum that we've built up the rest of the year so i want to give you a couple of strategies because it is totally totally possible to get deals in the summer I've gotten deals in the summer. I've taken properties on over the summer. To be honest, this is the best time to be taking properties on because this is a time when more tenants are looking to move and to rent properties. So when you take a property on in the summer, in most places, that is kind of the peak season for tenants looking for rooms or tenants, you know, or for guests that are looking for places to stay in your service accommodation. So this is the time to take on properties. This is the time to be doing deals and you can totally do it even while having a little bit of a slower time and maybe taking a holiday. You don't have to take a holiday, but sometimes it's nice to have a break. But what you do need to do is make sure you don't stop everything completely. So you still need to be doing at least one small thing every single day. That is my biggest advice for you. So read like The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson or The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Those are books that kind of explain almost the science behind it in a bit more detail. But basically what happens is by taking a small action every single day, we build up massive momentum. It doesn't feel like much in the beginning, you know, whether you email one um, estate agent a day or you don't email one estate agent a day, those first kind of week, it's not gonna make a huge difference. But if you add that up over a whole summer or a whole year, it's gonna make a massive difference. So if you kind of email one agent or schedule one viewing a day for 365 days, that means you'll have 365 viewings, maybe more, because sometimes you can book more than one viewing at a time. If you don't, maybe for the summer, that's, you know what, 30, 60 viewings that you miss out on. It's those small steps that make the biggest difference in building up your business. Oftentimes we think it's like the big things that we do. So it's those days that we send out, you know, a hundred letters, or it's the days that we go and view 20 properties. And those can feel like big things or that day that we spent three hours searching on right move for the perfect property. But those aren't the kind of pivotal moments in our business. The pivotal moments are just doing the small daily tasks that builds up that momentum. And over time, it creates a massive, massive curve going up. And that's what creates the momentum that we're all looking for in our business. If you stop, then you basically start all over at the beginning. So you might have been sending your letters, sending your letters, sending your letters, and things are just starting to pick up, and then you stop for the summer. You start again in kind of September, October, you start back flat line at the beginning, building up that momentum again. If you, you know, send that one message to the estate agents every day, they start to know you, they start to get familiar with you, you build up the momentum, you stop for two months, you start all over again. They completely forget who you are and you have to start building those relationships up all over again. So I want you to spend some time and just take 
you know, 10, 15 minutes today and think what are the small, small, small actions? What is something that you can do every single day this summer? You know, what are the small five, 10 minute actions so that you don't have to stress out and think, oh my gosh, what should I be doing today? Oh, I have to spend three hours on email or I have to, you know, spend 12 hours doing viewings and there's just not time for it. So I won't do nothing. You need to just pick those small tasks and make sure you've always got something to do that keeps your momentum going forward, that keeps you interested, that keeps you excited so that you don't completely forget about it and have to just, it takes a lot of effort to get going. It takes a lot less effort to just keep going. So that is my biggest tip for you over the summer and any time basically is just do the small things, do something small every single day towards building your business. And if you're picking the right actions, you will build that momentum and things will take off. Awesome. So again, I probably won't be going live at, at least at the set time next week. Maybe I'll pop in um, from the US and say hi to everybody. Otherwise, I'm just going to be relaxing. I do see there's a question on Instagram. Hi, I have a question on capital at the beginning. Should you factor in a percent of capital needed to cover voids? This depends. So if you're doing service accommodation, then you should be calculating your um, profits or your expected rents coming in from your guests at about 60%. So that way you, you're already factoring in 40% voids. For your HMOs, it's it will depend a little bit on the research that you've done for your area. Now, I see a lot of people just putting like a set 10% void number in there. I think that that's quite high. So if you're doing rent to rent, um, you want that number to be a lot lower. Um, if you think it's going to be void 10% and based on your research in the area, you know, you think that you'll have rooms empty quite regularly, then put that 10% void in there. But and then I would question why are you picking to do rent to rent in that area? So for me, over kind of a five, six year period, I've got about one to two percent voids. So, you know, you don't have to use that number. So pick something small. What I tended to do when I got started was I would round up my kind of bills number. So I'd make sure I was overestimating on all of my other costs. And that way I knew I was covered if there were voids because I knew those would always be a little bit less and there was some wiggle room in there. Um, but then I was in Oxford, I did my research and I knew there was a lot of demand in this market. So do your area research. You should have some allowance for voids, probably not as much as 10%. Um, so kind of see where you think it needs to be and what feels right to you. Awesome. That is it for today. Thank you guys for joining me. Super excited to have seen you all. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you and have a wonderful day.